got JD here. Uh, hello, and if you have not had an opportunity to uh, do some coaching, I hope you do think about it this year. I hope it's a, a decision that you do for yourself. Because right now, before you go into the year, like myself, you're probably at a getaway somewhere. You're here, it's the week before the you're supposed, you're supposed to start the year. and You're considering things that really matter to you and considering your options for the year, business-wise, life-wise. You're setting your production goals. You're setting your personal goals. And you're thinking about building bridges, how you're going to create these goals, these aspirations. And my biggest hope for you is that what you choose to create actually becomes a reality. And there's a lot that goes into making that a reality. There's a lot inside that you have to put together to make that a reality. There's a lot in your focus, in your ability to execute, your behavior, and your, your ability to learn. But I think one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to know your limitations. And by virtue of that, and know that you don't have all the answers, is to really sneak up on your ego to say to yourself, self, if I'm going to create something this magnificent, if I'm truly going to set my sights on dreams and things that are beyond my ability, I'm going to let myself get the gift of help. I'm going to get myself help. And so maybe you're thinking about getting a coach. Maybe it's, a, it's something you've been considering, but you haven't quite pulled the trigger. But there's probably some situations or some conditions that probably make you want to look at this even more. You've had other years, you've had years in the past where you've set your sights on intentions and you've come up short. Uh, you haven't quite gone all the way. You haven't reached your entire higher potential. There's probably challenges that are going on around you that, that are so obviously big that you probably fatalize them and say, you know, ah, no, I don't want to tackle that right now. I don't want to deal with that. But when you do, it makes all the difference when you start to inoculate and clear out the issues and the messes and make space for all the other potential things that you could be putting your time and attention on. And so, look, to create what you want, you start with a choice of what you want to create. And that's what maybe you should be thinking now is, what do I really want to create? And don't make it attainable. Don't make it realistic. And consider what it is that you have right now. Be truly honest with yourself about what you have, the good, the bad, the ugly. Describe to yourself what you actually have now. Take an inventory of yourself. Take an inventory of your business. Take an inventory of your health. Take an inventory of your relationships. Take an inventory of your personal finances. Look at it all together. This is the beginning of a life plan. And you can either live by a life plan or you can live by accidents. You can live by reacting and responding to life. And life is pretty full. I mean, if it's, it's like a vacuum, right? If you're not doing something by choice, life will rush to fill it with whatever it is. And that may not be what really matters to you. So it starts by asking the question, what do I really want to create? And then what do I actually have? And then, of course, the third facet is, how am I going to get there? And part of that is... And then part of it will be left out through the activities and the disciplines and the rituals that you think you need to do. You'll be using those as mechanisms for feedback to be able to make strategic adjustments to create what you want. And it's going to be a process of learning by doing. There'll, there'll be emotional frustration. There'll be discouragement. There's all that, the shadow side of creating, the love-hate relationship. And then there's the other side where it's exuberant and exciting and full of enthusiasm. But I think if there's one thing that you absolutely must do, and forgive me for being so mandatory, you have to make your personal energy dependent on what makes a difference and what matters to you. I ask you, as a courageous person, to make a choice to stay in the lanes of those things, that I will follow a law of spiritual economics, that my personal energy is a function of what makes a difference times what matters. And if I wander outside of that equation, then I'm losing resources, I'm losing value that I could be giving to the world, and I'm wasting my time. If you came here to do something, right? And so to kind of get a sense of what you need to do, you need to see kind of a three-dimensional picture between what you really have now and what that's saying to you and what you want to create. And somewhere in there, you have to look at how the current state that you have is connecting with who you are and connecting with a future possibility, a future self, a truer work that's ready to emerge. 
Trust that. Don't betray yourself. Your personal energy is a function of what makes a difference times what matters. I think the one thing that makes us all feel truly filled is making a difference in people's lives. Think about how you're doing on that. Score yourself on how you're making an impact on other people's dreams and them creating the things that they want. I hope you get help in this upcoming year and create the creations that matter to you because your energy is a function of what makes a difference times what matters. I hope to see you there.